All right, today on the bench today, we've got my single-ended tryout amplifier. This amp uses uh, six EM7s, which you've probably never heard of before. They are two triodes in one envelope. Uh, if this thing will focus. Yeah, two triodes in one envelope. Uh, one's a signal triode, one is a power triode. And as you can see, valve rectifier, these are chokes and much, much overkill transformers. Now, this is a very controversial design of an amplifier and it's controversial because it allegedly sounds really good, but the it is, it is horribly inefficient. I think I measured the efficiency of this thing uh, to be about 4%. Which is like, I mean, I know tube amps are, you know, already really bad because of their heaters, but this thing, four freaking percent, man, that's, that's just ridiculous. And it's only two, uh, a, a little over two watts a channel. However, it does break up pretty nicely. See, I got, I got two RCA jacks and quarter inch phono, you know, the usual stuff back here. Uh, I put this wood around it uh, just to make it look better. Oh, by the way, this is not my design. I got this off the internet. Was it was it Bruce Heron that made this? Oh no, damn it! I should know that. Um, no, it's uh, Matt Renaud. Um, he he's had a number of designs on uh, DIYAudioProjects.com. And, uh, well, that, that website's amazing. All kinds of great ideas. But uh, <clears throat> this one caught my attention because I've always wanted to know what a set amplifier sounds like, but I don't want to pay the ungodly price for, you know, two A3s and, you know, giant transformers. Well, even though I, you know, kind of did anyway. Um, these tubes are, like, dirt cheap. No one really knows about them, you know, until now, basically. That's an easy 81 rectifier. I'll show you the schematic. It is like the simplest amp. Like this would be a good beginner amp for somebody. Yep, there's the schematic. Yep, just literally two triodes. I got a gain stage and I got your power amp stage. And it's a 5k to 8 ohm transformer. And these are um, Ed Core transformers I got. If you didn't really notice from looking at them. Now the power supply, uh, he he used like an 8 ohm choke, and he specified some resistance in there. And he had this to actually like trim out the voltage. I omitted that and I made this a 10 Henry choke with a little bit higher resistance. So the power supply voltage is probably a hair lower than it should be. Um, also what I've gone and done is somewhere, somewhere in here, uh, probably right after the rectifier, I don't exactly remember, I added this. That is a... Uh, high tension current meter. And I kind of just added that because, you know, something needed to go here in the middle, but it actually proved to be uh, very useful because these tubes are not really that reliable. And if, if you, and by the way, this amp has no negative feedback. As you saw from the schematic, it is totally just wide open. And that means if these tubes are at all mismatched, you're going to have a difference in uh, your stereo channels. Like, it's going to be different. So you have to get matched tubes. Um, and I've had... I've went through a few pairs of tubes because they, you know, some of them would have, like, grid poisoning on them. And the only way I'd know it's something's wrong is because this meter is just pegged. It should be pulling about 80 milliamps or so. Um... But I had one of these tubes get, uh, like when it got hot, the grid would get hot and self-emit. And it would just pretty much destroy itself. It was pretty annoying. But yeah, the ones in here now aren't the strongest. They're like maybe 70-80% of what they should be. But at least they're matched and they do the job. Now, yeah. I mean, with this size chassis and these transformers, surely I can make like at least a 15 watt per channel something else you know like push pull anything but no it's it's single ended triode as the sound is um the sound um it is a little bit of what they're claiming 
it is a lot warmer and it does break up in a, in a lot better way than most amps do. It's a lot warmer sounding for sure. It's, it's It reminds me of like a Fender Champ. You know, if you've ever heard that before, it's a warm sound and then when it breaks up, it's, you know, it's predictable, except there's no negative feedback. So it's, a, it's even more gradual than that. But um, is it worth the money? You know, probably not. I mean, I poured probably 300-ish dollars into this thing to get it to look the way it is. And I tell you, I probably could have built a much louder amp. This thing works for like one thing, and that is sitting on this desk, filling this room. It barely fills this room. Like if you're sitting at your desk listening to records, that's about what it's good for. It can't hardly even do like, like a lounge or area or something. It's just not powerful enough. You know, this amp might even be kind of good for beginners just because it's so damn simple. I mean, it's really hard to screw up. Like if this thing broke, you could like open it up and just look in there and be like, oh, that fell off. In fact, I'll do that right now. Yep, that's the inside. <clears throat> Got the capacitor bank here. Uh, fuse, mains, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, yeah, not a lot in here. Those Those two holes are ventilation quote unquote they're they're accidental they're totally accidental i didn't go too crazy with the capacitors well okay i kind of did these were like 12 bucks a pop these coupling caps i figured in an amp this simple i mean the critical components had better be good so i kind of just caved and paid a stupid price for <laughs> a capacitor i don't know but, you know, the good thing about this is that, like, if this thing breaks, like, even a novice could come in here and be like, oh, that fell off, and, you know, and just, like, solder it back, and it'd be good. You know, there's none of this, oh, I don't know if this op amp blew or whatever. No, it's just, like, it's pretty freaking straightforward what this thing is. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing special in here. In fact, these transformers were only 8-ohm tap. Uh... Yep, and no negative feedback anywhere. It's just, yeah, very simple.